So, this is what life has come to. This video is gonna be made, but let me tell you something. It's fucking murder time. Time. And it's recording! Yep. Nice. Now that I've checked my recording and seeing that it's valid, now, fucking murder time. We are gonna play some dungeon quests today, and, um, that's pretty simple, um, I'm just gonna, I'm just gonna to be stupid in this, in this video. I'm gonna try something that I've tried before, but I can't give up on because I never really felt like continuing it at all. This is dungeon quest, except that we're not equipping any items when we start. Basically, restarting, but with all your ex all your levels in a nutshell. So yes, it pretty much is freaking murder time, bro. We are going to mess some people up. We're gonna see blood spill. I mean, I guess sand spill in this game, but we're gonna see blood spill. We're gonna rip out their organs, and it's gonna be really cool. Wow. Now, you can see hundreds of people dying at the scenes as a random weirdo with explosive minds start exploding them, cut, um, dismembering them into gruesome, um, murderous scenes of pain. How far can I get with my stat points at the items I get alone? Yeetus, yeetus. I don't have my x-ray powers, otherwise known as lag. I have to check every single corner. And yes, I did have x-ray. But not that kind of x-ray, it was just lag. So, it was just so laggy that the, that some of the chunks, some of the um, objects didn't load in so I could see through the walls. So yeah, that was pretty OP. <coughs> I wonder how people speedrun Desert Temple when it's so randomly generated. Murder time. It's freaking murder time. I got armor and the sword. Wow, I'm so lucky. Armor time. Go back in there. Nice. I actually have a guild, it's called Knights of Eternia. Level 100 plus is only. Well, let me max this stuff out. Max. Yeah, boah. Yeah, boah. Um, now let's just go directly to Nightmare because I think we can do it. You can see these two logos, poof, and then they're gonna put back on. The, the lag spike, there we go, they poofed, now they're back. And they're the, you know, the original one. Emotes. 
No. Murder time. It's fucking murder time. Re vulgarness, I hate it, but I have to do it. Kind of suck. Smack. Oh my gosh, I don't want shot them. I definitely do not want shot them. I am scared now. The reason why I'm still posting on YouTube and not just completely giving up is because I like YouTube. It's pretty fun. I mean, and if I have to just be vulgar to avoid getting a 42 million, 42,000 fine, then I'll do it. I'll stay freaking vulgar. And I'll also depict gruesome scenes. Scenes for two. This temple's RNG is just BS. Just complete utter BS. RNG is so terrible for boss fights that it should be actually more pattern wise. I mean, I don't mind it with Desert Temple's map layouts, but I mean, with the patterns, it's just. No, man. Eat. I'm gonna make another video purely on um, ro about role playing. It's gonna be a small, um, in more informational video, unlike my usual gaming content. By my usual, I mean like a couple of videos that I, that that are still on my my videos. Oh, this kind of sucks, but once again, and I'm lucky. Eat us to flee this. Eat us. Eat us. Commit. Self. Delete us. Eat us the fetus. Ew. There we go. Are you kidding me? Hold on, I guess I know which arm I'm using. I can freaking Discord. What do you mean when I wake? You are awake, you're typing this, you freaking Okay. I wonder how many people ask well she noticed how high level I am. Um, how much damage do they do? Oh that's some spicy damage counts. Nice. Nice damage. I hope I suck. Okay, so I sell that thing and I don't want to talk to him. Oh my novice. No, no, it's not, it's not that. Oh, it was freaking T30, oh Jesus. Hold on, time to upgrade my um, brand new armor piece. Hold on, where is it? Where is my new armor piece? There it is. Upgrades. My new one. I put my special bronze long sword and my uh, red knight armor and my titanium helmet. I'm to do Winter Outpost now. Should I go directly Nightmare? Do you think I can do that? Mm, I'll go insane. Actually, no. I only do 12 million. I should probably do medium. Nice. I'm 
not going to go into this Discord server. The rules are NSFW. The rules are freaking classified as NSFW. What the frick? Winter Outpost. This map is basically a cornerstone of um, things because, um, actually, if I recall, Winter Outpost, the car um, I am actually um, a Dungeon Quest veteran. Pretty nice, right? I I played when I played Winter Outpost when they weren't nerfed, otherwise known as when they had like uh, around. Uh, I think they had a uh, 10 million HP back then. No, no, not 10 million, but 10,000. 10,000 per easy, I think it is. Yeah, 10,000 per easy. <clears throat> and this is medium, and they don't even have 10,000 now. I was so excited to um, get to um, try out the Winter Outpost. I was so happy because I had the Gold Slayer there and a pretty good warrior set, so I thought I was pretty good to solo. Um, I was wrong. I was able to do no damage with my whirlwinds, which kind of sucked. Yeah, it sucked a lot. And, um... After that, I basically, I scouted raids. Raids on, dun on the Discord server, I, d I didn't know much about, and... Well, Dungeon Quest wasn't that popular of a game, and, um, let's say that we... So I just went through lobbies trying to find people who did gigantic raids of like four, of eight people. That was actually a lot back then. And and um, um people, but then I saw all these great people who had um art, had, had healing abilities, and they were willing to help me out, and I was super grateful. And then I met a friend called David. He's um, Swedish. She carried. Um, he was on insane while I was in medium or so, and he carried me. I was a healer, and I died, and then basically we added each other later because we both failed. I don't know really why we did that, but I appreciate it. Am I gonna be a mage now? I don't have any mage weapons. But that's so better. But, um, so, yeah. And after that, I was pretty much happy. And then they, un they released Pirate Island. And oh boy, was that another can of worms. Pirate Island, now Pirate Island. Insane and Nightmare only, which kind of sucked, and a lot of people were confused why they um, didn't add the um, yeah, easy, normal, and hard. But no one really complained, they just did it because they didn't really care that much. And, um, hold on, let me upgrade this. Now with this, I should probably use energy orbs. Which I'm gonna do that. And why am I not using the starter wad instead? Um, I don't know. Technically, because I didn't obtain it, I guess I'm not kind of allowed to. It's kind of it's a bit weird. Energy orbs technically do more damage, and um, right now we don't really give a crap about kind of cooldowns. We just care about damage outputs. So we are now doing, um, in, yeah, let's do that one. So as I was saying, when Pirate Island came out, that was a whole nother can of worms. Well, that's simply because, well, the, oh, Pirate Island, um, I, I basically wasn't able to do anything. And David was a serious grinder, and I kind of gave up on the game after Winter Outpost, so I just got carried. However, I was still quite devoted to the game, so I still played a lot. I gained progress, and when I could do DPS, I would do DPS, but I'd re but I usually heal, and David did damage. Which, however, that doesn't mean I was completely useless back then, though. I still grinded when I needed to, but 
basically my unmotivation not yet no that's a story for a bit later oh jeez these boys have a lot of hp yeah maybe not no oh yeah right i don't have any points in that yet i'm stupid don't worry i'm gonna fix that but when pirate Island came out. Um, I think if I recall, yeah, I was a mage, and so was David. Eventually, the we basically breezed through. Um, insane because we didn't really have much happen. But in Nightmare, we got pulse fires, and then we got skull flames. Yeah, I'm not talking about pulse. Uh, about um this newer phantom flames. I'm talking the OG skull flames. These. Now it's just a ghostly orb. I've heard that they did this be straight simply because, well, well, because skulls are not that good. I'm also really confused about that decision. Sorry for jitter clicking noises, but kind of expected. There you go. And, um, and I'm a bit curious about why um, um, our buddy V Caffy decided to not just just keep skull flames. I mean, I mean, why do they remove skulls when skulls are already super prominent in the games? I mean, I guess they do have some. It's it's still a Roblox game, so there's probably young people playing. So I guess they have to make exceptions. But the majority of the Dungeon Quest community is actually E plus 13. He serious grinders who um, grind a really lot, and I sometimes don't understand it too well. Oh, why they grind so much? Now that I have my proper points, and, and let's see if we can do this. Come on, fire. That changed almost nothing. What the frick? I need four blasts for my orbs of destruction. Maybe I should switch to skulls or... I don't know. Technically energy orbs the best. Like in this scenario, so I don't really know if I want to choose. Because energy orb is basically the best spell right now for mages because of this powerful DPS. I mean, you could make the um, thing where electric field has similar things with, but because you can. Oh wait, no. Well, actually, that's that's straight up dumb. Then obviously energy orb will win because. Well, the only reason why people use the explosive mine instead of vortex grenade is because of the um, ability to stack them. I'm not sure if stacking spells was supposed to be, but well, uh, well uh, when V Kathy pressed first plant spells, but but it sure became a way a way to um, become overpowered, and it became a well-known strategy uh, in the late games. Um, that's why um because obviously vortex does way more damage, and straight up, but when you can use two mines and and have the same cooldown as one. One? Yeah, I guess pretty OP. <coughs> Hold on, I'm gonna heal myself. So, um, yeah, that's how stacking really came to be, but I guess electric field just doesn't do that well because, well, energy orb can move a lot and has a lot of variations. And, um, let's be honest, electric field is quite hard to land on the Lord, on Lord Varrosh, who literally teleports every five seconds, like, oh my goodness. And, well, 
And for the orbital outpost people, oh, you know that I'm not making that up. Uh, Lord is one of the greatest RNG bosses in Dungeon Quest history. Right next to um, right next to the golems. Are the golems? You may ask. Well, the golems um are the substitution of what I like to call the golden golem, the nature golem, and that rock golem from Samurai Powers, which has nothing to do there. I mean, seriously, why? Why did they add a golem? But golems are known for their RNG-based attacks because, well, but first of all, the golden golem likes to um randomly e beam rectangles when he moves. Those, and also likes to shoot orbs, like everywhere. Oh yeah, there's also Captain Blackbeard, he's one of the highest, higher ones. You may be surprised that Blackbeard is on this list because, well, this is Pirate Island anyway, but imagine you're in freaking Pirate Island, and then, and then you see this gigantic creature there who literally, he can annihilate you with a snap with unlucky RNG because they literally just put its humongous circles around you. Kind of unfortunate if you ask me. Yeah, the nature golem, well, is there anything to explain about the nature golem? The guy literally spams, spams circles everywhere. Who does that? Who, what kind of evil maniac adds to the nature golem? And then there's um, the demonic pirate captain, who, who isn't really that RNG-based, but has one major thing that really makes it frustrating. It regens HP every time you get hit by it. Like, every hit, it will regen. Now the Lord is um, basically the worst parts of all of those combined. What do I mean by this? Um, well, um, uh, well, let's just say um, how 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 do we put this? Um, hold on. So the Lord has high RNG with their high RNG with the orbs that he spawns when he teleports in the in the room with them. I mean, the rectangles don't have much RNG, the spaces are pretty much even, the same, the same every time. <coughs> I mean, they're pretty predictable. However, um, so yeah, he has the major RNG factor, which can be hard to dodge, so you literally need to um, use a professional technique called uh, basically jitter-clicking everywhere. They're going WAS is just going like this. <laughs> it's being able to move sporadically in any direction you need, you need as soon as possible. Well, which works 90% of the time actually, but he also regens, but not every hit, every hit that he does with his own attacks, not not attacks that are just far outlandish somewhere. What do I mean by that once more? Um, well, but another way to put that is, um, hmm, hold on. Uh, he has a focus beam and an orb of the an energy orb that he fires. Any of if you get hit by any of these, he will regen. He also strikes with his weapon a random target, it, and if you get hit by a sword, he will regen. This basically make and he also has high DPS, doing around 7.5 million in in nightmare, and he will regen trillions of HP. Which isn't that much, but still, it's, it's, a, it's a setback. Especially when you're playing on insane carries, which have hundreds of people for some reason, because kind of, Orbital Outpost is a big barrier, and basically not a lot of people know how to get past it. But when, and a lot of people don't know really a good way to dodge, so they just ran, run into the, run into the rectangles, those lines. And those stun, by the way, those stun for like 5 seconds. Which is more than enough time for the Lord to charge up a beam. And he heals trillions, and the best DPSs out there can maybe spike up to 3 trillion. I've never seen it myself, but I'm, I'm expecting 3 trillion as, a, as the best possible. 
Oh, because I have green and I have a meh egg pot legendary and I can already do the 2 trillion, so. And that's what I'm just expecting. And so, basically, the thing, because he just heals a lot, because there's so many people everywhere, and they're not that it dispersed, so, yeah. I got Guardian Armor and uh, Warrior Helmet. You're swapping Warrior to Mage, and then the Warrior to it Mage from Warrior in freaking split seconds. So, yeah. Uh, if you're really unlucky and basically no healer knows how to dodge, well, you might just end up with spending one minute trying to lower the guy's HP to no avail. And at that point, just reset and make another, and then make it private and just decimate and just kick half of them and from playing. Because honestly, at that point, you will never be able to win. Even the best pros always carry insane with galactics. Straight up because they have to. It's just that hard. And since I just got warrior armor, I might as well use it. And swap back to warrior? Yeah, why not? I have the weapon. So, um, yeah, that's basically the Orbit Outpost game in a nutshell. And, the, and, um, let's just say that you won't really get a carry on the Orbit Outpost Nightmare. It's really hard to find a no requirement one, especially because everyone needs, uh, has a requirement of levels, which is around one plus 160, depending on the person. <laughs> I mean, I can't really get on most carries, too. It's just that hard. Why did I do... I do such insignificant damage. So, um... Great dungeon... Clean... No, no. Stuff. Um, another tale. Okay, what about King's Castle? Oh, now King's Castle is just a. Uh, it was really hard for me to get into because well, David, it was really struggling with it. He was trying to get on on every single carry possible, trying to get better items, and when he was finally able to solo insane, if I recall, the boss had around uh, twenty million HP, which is extremely high. So, Gale Slices, constant Gale Slices. Um, not Gale Slices, um... I see... The, those smash things that you get. I thought it was something Gale, but I don't... I don't know. Don't mind that. There's nothing. Don't worry about it. And, um, yeah. If you are really struggling to get into um, King's Castle simply because of the fact that of the sheer difficulty of. Because we didn't really experience that many patterns yet. And so we were kind of new to this all pattern. Like, first of all, that. the. The Beast Keeper, I think he was called, who has the uh, lava patterns. They were really hard for us at the beginning because we generally didn't know about much about patterns. We just know that they attack and that they attack in a certain way. We never really considered patterns existed. Kind of weird for this game now. I don't use uh, the obviously there's, there's patterns, but before that was that wasn't common knowledge.
But some people who already know about patterns was able to quickly adapt to this change and start mastering it. But like people like me who didn't really know much about patterns at all, kind of were seriously confused about what to do. And eventually we learned, of course, but it was quite hard. And then there's the Archmage. Oh, the Archmage. Where do I start? The Archmage is just the embodiment of pain for anybody who has any lag difficulties. If you have lag, do not try to solo or do not try to solo King's Castle, for you will be decimated. You will straight up be decimated. It, and one because of the one and only Archmage. Is when we first met the Archmage, it was basically so incomprehensible. It just had random things going on every five seconds, and, and it was really hard for us or any of us to predict. So we tried to tank, which was a foolish idea, but we tried it nonetheless, and it kind of worked. We were able to win a couple of times, but generally, a lot of people died because of the Archmage. Afterwards, there's the king. The king. Well, he's just a pushover. The king does high damage, yes, but uh, his attacks are really predictable. Well, and also are pretty much perfectly avoidable in any case scenario. You just move from one side to another like in this fashion. And then, after he, he jumps, you just immediately start moving. You have to be in constant movement as in this boss fight because if not then you might just ha be unlucky with the um with the hitboxes and get hit and he does a lot of damage but otherwise it was pretty okay now the underworld it was ah <sighs> the underworld oh, I just I have so many memories of the underworld the underworld well the first time I was able to get in that's on some aid with David was um the first boss, that amalgam, the demonic amalgam, I think it was called. Well, I was so bad at dodging it. I don't know why, but I, it was generally, I was never able to dodge it, and I pretty much died every time. I really felt bad because I don't want it. I don't. I didn't want that to happen. I generally just wanted the game, but I died constantly because I wasn't able to predict the patterns. Oh boy, how many times I died because of that amalgam. And then there's the, um, there's that reindeer. I don't really remember that, his name that well, but it was some weird, I think it was some Greek name or some, some ancient Latin name or something. And, well, that was a doozy because, well, Bim makes an, a, a circle and where it's gonna attack and that's, that's predictable, but it also makes lava where he walks. Alex making eventually with the map is just covered in lava. Uh, so people had to develop a strategy called just staying really close together to avoid spreading lava. And it worked. It actually works most of the time. But sometimes, well sometimes. It it didn't and when it didn't work, we got decimated because the lava it doesn't it does constant damage. You will not survive the lava that easily. The lava will be really, really, really frustrating. Oh, and then there are like the guardians who desperately jump over the lava, uh, trying to get to the to the DPSs to heal, but who either die in the process or the DPS is already dead. Which is generally unfortunate. A lot of games ended because of that reindeer. And then there's the um the demonic the demon lord. Now demon lord well um okay he's pretty predictable. Well the guy basically attacks just in rows, and those are pretty easy to dodge, especially with the, the time it takes for it to fully charge and attack. And, and um, he smashes the ground, I mean, um, putting an orb that, um, of, of attacks. 
attacks, which are pretty easily dodgeable if you just stay far away, like basically any DPS would. And then there's the heart that he eats out of his body. Well, it, it doesn't do much. It just summons enemies, and, and enemies are pretty easy to murder. If you just have a terrible DPS, then you might have a challenge with it, but otherwise you'd be fine. Um, after Underworld, there's the Samurai Palace that has no correlation to Underworld. I mean, think about it. You go from the desert, like probably the Saharan Desert, or to freaking uh, Antarctica. Uh, and then, for some reason, you just suddenly just teleport to an island that most likely situates in, uh, in one of the, um, in one of the tropics. And then after that, you literally go to hell. And after you go to hell, you leave hell. And then you go to Japan. Or was it? I always get China and Japan confused when it comes to the to the warriors. But samurai, yeah, samurai are Japanese, I think. Yeah. I actually got this the first time I just randomly played <laughs> Underworld for no reason. Um, uh, Hard Nice Sword. Put that on physical. Also, um, this is actually a pretty addicting way to kind of restart Dungeon Quest and kind of feel refreshed. And also, maybe grind a couple collectibles if you're at it, why not? So, uh, Samurai Palace. Samurai was generally fun. It was just really, really fun. Uh, I really enjoyed Samurai simply because of its, um, its variety. Y you could dodge, you could do whatever you could. You could eat shurikens, and that was pretty good. You could even bl use hand cannons. That was pretty fun, too. Generally, it was just a good version, but... The bosses, I do have something to talk about. I, uh, this is one of the first bosses that we ever, ever see RNG. And no, I'm not talk. I'm not counting the. I'm not counting the. The the um, ice elemental will be certainly because well. The RNG in that one is quite easy to dodge and, it, and it's really forgiving. And the patterns still exist. However, this boss is just throw all the patterns out of the window because there are nothing that you can predict. Anything can happen. And that's why people just decide to just be sporadic. This is where um, the constant moving technique I think first developed in uh, the greatest of players. And then there's the golem. Well, the golem is just the weaker version of the nature golem that didn't exist yet, and it was actually it was actually a bug that you could just really mess around with the, the, how the golem starts attacking, and you can basically just attack it while never actually landing in any of the areas that make it start attacking. That bug was eventually patched, sadly, but otherwise it was it its RNG was quite focused on players, so um, yeah. And then there's the Miyamoto, um, which uh, when I first saw that name, I immediately thought to um, Nintendo's um, uh, one of, um, was it Nintendo's um, owner or something? I mean, they created Mario, but I'm I'm not 100% sure if they own Nintendo as a company in global. I mean, they most like, but I think they do. So, yeah, 
And that boss has a uh, summons minions that does fire cyclones, which are pretty hard to avoid if you don't have illusion blast or something that can accelerate your speed. So you have to prioritize them in the same. Like, see, the RNG here is so spread out that it's pretty hard to get hit. But, um, after Samurai comes Canals, which also doesn't make sense because that probably looks like an urban area. In J Japan, if we're stating that... Mm. Nice. You're gonna stay warrior like this. <coughs> Candles, now we sh now what about candles? What about it? First of all, let's just agree that the Overlord set looks awesome. Because it really does. If that's the first time I ever saw a top hat, and that and it's just beautiful. It's purely beauty. Who doesn't want to have a top hat that does freaking hundreds of, of that physical damage? Everyone does. That's the answer. Um, but, yeah, the the first boss was really frustrating because that's the first time we actually saw a minion that detonates. And a lot of people just got yeeted off because of it. And a lot of people raged. A lot of raging. And then there's the one boss that requires cooperation. There's the, the Guardian Overlord, which for surprisingly doesn't have that much HP. And does a heck lot of damage. So yeah, with that spinning blade that just yeets on top of your forehead, just like that, like snap. That was pretty frustrating. Pretty darn frustrating. Especially when, when that knife that falls down, and if that person doesn't go into safe zone, everybody's affected. It's a global punishment for one person's stupidity. And I never really understood that feeling. Why would you want to make everyone pun? Why would you want to punch everyone for the fault of one? This is a really big way to, um, oh. No, I'm not gonna look in the... No... The Warrior Overlord has high deep... has RNG. Has so much freaking RNG. I mean, it's still avoidable, sure, but RNG is very visible in that game. And the rectang those lines, things are, uh, are super wide, right? and you, and if you're unlucky and they're they're right next to each other, well, then you're bone. You're just straight up bone. There's nothing you can do about it. Oh yeah, then there's Skull Flames controversy, but as you as a lot of people know that Skull Flames was actually used until Underworld. Oh jeez, I got one shot. Actually, I don't think a lot of people knows that, but yeah, in, in um, Skull Flames were actually used. Um, I think almost all the way, all actually yeah, all the way to Samurai Palace. But then they, I think if I recall, they got nerfed. Actually, no. And Skull Flames controversies it really started it by changing it to Phantom Flames that nobody understood. Why would you want to remove the skull? It looked awesome. So, um, there was super high detail on it. Now you just want to change it to a hacking orb? A hacking orb. Do you hear yourself? 
But nobody could really do anything because this is Roblox game. We can't, we really can't do much about it. But eventually, people realized that some people still had the OG version of Skull Flames, and people started it trying to um um trade for them. But I think the trade market for it inflated or something like it got super inflated because um. It was basically worth nothing when I actually noticed I had one. Basically, no one cared about it. Which was a bit weird because nobody can get it anymore. Just like the, um, was it the wooden dagger? Now it's replaced with the bronze dagger or something. I don't recall. Now, Blackbeard, like I said, the huge RNG balls of, of death and destruction. I mean, yeah, there's a lot of ground, so there is room for error, but... Come on, man. Why would you make this? Why would you make this a boss? Who would make this a boss? Generally, purely based on RNG, that's just purely unlucky. And, um, okay, let's, uh, let's go back to the warrior on Overlord. Or, and that one attack where he, um, raises his hand, that's at one of, one of his weapons, and there's, um, basically heck yeeting, hell yeeting onto you. So, well, that's not really that hard, be honest. That's basically the same thing as the, as the dreaded <coughs> captain in, of murdery, deathly pain, pain. But... And then there's that attack where you have to get a shield to avoid it. I mean, you could just slowly get into it. I mean, you, it wastes time generally, but nobody really is gonna end it, or notice it. You can tank it, but it's just really stupid for you to. So, if you're playing Dungeon Quest and you're finally arriving to Candles, then I recommend you to strictly not. Do not tank that. Do not tank the Warrior Overlord. That is just stupid. On a whole other level. The inspector passage is stupid. Okay, so after candles was ghastly. This is really where my unmotivation started to kick in at semi when when I was done with candles. I basically just kind of gave up on the game because well, I was tired of it. I was tired of all the grinding and all the pain that I had to do just to get there. So I stopped playing. I, I barely played a little bit yet every so often because I wanted to play with my friend David. And and um, I still found the enjoyment of winning those games and having that small bit of adrenaline flow through your body. Also, let's just admit that this is one of the greatest soundtracks ever. I could never really find it on YouTube though. And that attack is just easy. <laughs> Who would just get up close like that? Oh, oh wow. So otherwise known as would that be better? No, no way. <laughs> but Oh boy, I like played a couple times and I stopped it and I played a couple times and this is where David's luck changed and he got two fucking sea serpent wings. Come on. But um yeah, the Kraken. Now the Kraken. That's one. That's just plain 
easy. It's just easy, man. <laughs> Kraken is so easy. Just, just there's these random sharks that they have a huge cooldown until they activate. And then he smacks you with his tentacles. You can literally avoid one of his tentacles entirely by just staying on one side. You literally have to be purposely trying to murder yourself if you want to fail that. Genuinely trying to fail. <sighs> Time to do King's Castle again. No, wait. No, I think I can do it here. <sighs> so, the next, oh uh, no, not the corrupted over. That's just terrible, man. That RNG is insane. They fire hundreds of blasts, and sometimes if you get unlucky, you might just get stuck. And don't even get me started about that humongous radius of that circle that appears, which is almost impossible to dodge. And then worst of all, eventually just goes to his cannon and just starts eating RNG balls everywhere. Yeah, where you basically have to just use some kind of heal aura while you run to the cannonball. That boss is plain all just making me suffer. And then there's the sea serpent. The sea serpent is actually not that bad. Those attack, this, the, um, those are rectangular attacks that just come out of the one of those sea pools. Um, those are pretty easy to dodge. We get similar ones at the underworld. However, and the, however, the fire. That's also easy to dodge. You just have to go behind him, but it's like right next to him. And just like, hi there. And when he attacks you, just nope out of this, like this, and you'll be fine. So the sea serpent's really forgiving, compared to the rest of the bosses. And then there's steampunk sewers, where um actually um I got like, I just stopped playing dungeon quests for so long after. Uh, but I uh, but I still had contact with David. He's, he talked he told me about what was happening, like how steampunk was working, mm -hmm. and um, well, um, and when I finally was remotivated to play again, well, blessed day I wasn't able to play because Roblox was freaking broken, and when Roblox was broken, I was really sad. So I decided to um, after months of waiting for the Roblox dev team to fix it, I decided to just download a Windows emulator. And do it myself, which worked, but there's still it was a trial emulator. It wasn't good to know. Why am I not getting the eggs? Well, because I don't feel like it. Did I? Did I break? That wasn't me. I thought I broke the Spider Queen by accident. Alrighty then, so Steampunk, the, the first boss, that's just straight up suffering, man. And there's a bit of RNG involved with the circles, um, how they change, so... And so it's super hard to predict. And then, and then there's just the plain old RNG of the random orbs, and then they get bigger and bigger and bigger. And that's just why, man, just why do you do this to me? Oh, the, oh yeah, it's called the Castle Siege bot, I think. Oh god. So yeah. Yeah. Uh, and then there's that targeting attack, but that's but that has a bit of RNG involved, so you might just get boned. But that's fine. And then there's the second boss, which I just hate. It's just it's just, it's just crap. With the attack skill set that you're gonna most likely have, you need to be quite close range to um attack um 
any of the enemies. But guess freaking what? Freaking hard to... Freaking hard. So freaking hard, man. And there's the laser, and then there's that constant circle that just follows you around, making you suffer a bit more inside. Better weapons? Nice. Oh, this blade's better than my other blade. Give it that. And then there's the, um, no wait, that's the Cultic Master Siege Bot, isn't it? I'm stupid. The set, that's, that bot, the, the boss, the final boss. Okay, just, just the final boss. I'm freaking hecky. The final boss, that's just, um, I mean, I never really gave a much, gave a crap about it, because I was, and because I was usually carried through that one, but, yeah, I remember um, seeing the, f the suffering in someone's eyes when they had to go behind the gears just to wait until the freaking lasers are gone. Um, but generally, Castle's, the, um, that the boss wasn't that bad. Boss raids! Okay, let's start with that. If the gigantic. the first boss that you ever have, the tier 1 boss. That's just Castle Siege bot in a nutshell. The the suffering level is quite similar to Castle Siege bot. I mean, in it just it just attacks it in, in lines and then it just randomly he, he summons molten things. It just makes you suffer all around, you know. Then. Mm, I might as well go into DG trading and try to figure out a way to get some blue alien or something. So, um, yeah. That's one of the best parts of the game. Yeah, no one's really... There's not... The evolution system of getting um, blue with green max doesn't work anymore. There we go, I'm just gonna put that down or not. Nice. Someone named themselves Zero Two. <laughs> Oh, that's why. No wonder I was struggling. I didn't change my points to freaking physical. Well, now it's gonna be murder time pretty soon. Let's do this.
Okay, let's go back. Oh, my inventory is a cluster frick. Perfect. <sighs> so, and the robot gladiator just it's just patterns, man. It's pretty easy. It's just those lasers that he spawns with those orbs are just frustrating. Nature Golem, that's just RNG man. It's just I like to call it the RNG man just because it's it's that that's what he is. He's just RNG. Then the Nature Guardian, however, he's not that bad. Uh, there's way worse though. And then there's the Heavenly. The dragon, that's Quite pattern based, but a bit of RNG sprinkled in there, which kind of makes it a bit right inducing. A little bit. Murder time. I told you it's fucking murder time. Okay, so. You are a monster and you must be killed. Um, Heavenly, the dragon's not that bad, but the golem, that's just more RNG, man. This, I told you, all the golems are just RNG. And then, what about Obert Outpost? Well, but I think that's one of the first things I even covered. I mean, I guess we didn't mention really a lot about the first, but the destroyer's just a piece of crap. That machine gun's just BS. That's just straight BS. The second boss, the, why do the orbs do so much freaking damage? They can melt through a uh, guy with max guardian pretty easily. And the lord, we already talked more enough about most enough about him. So that's my tale of, um, of Dungeon Quest and how um, my experiences was and now I'm kinda sad about what happened to the game it got ruined it generally got ruined simply because of the fact that, that is <sighs> when the, the, the dumber people came in everyone that started playing this game are true veterans who knew what they were getting in for but the new people just got in because there was YouTubers recording it and streaming it. And who just wanted to just do nothing and just still have fun. They didn't know about any of the grinding aspects. That's how the carries started. Everyone was just spamming for plus help. And one day, I think, I'm not really sure about the or origins of the carry word. But I think one day just said, someone plus carry me. And uh, it just got... It just spread out like wildfire, man. And then the game got ruined. Everyone's so 
was so polished. Everyone was working hard for this, for everything they've achieved. But mm -hmm. now they just snap their fingers and they get someone to help them. They aren't even respectful. They just say plus care me and then just walk up to you and just start spamming it and chat about their tr trash trade offers. There's, there's, ah. Oh. <sighs> the game got ruined straight up, uh, tr simply because of the fan base, it's who didn't want to do crap or anything. So that's my tale of Dungeon Quest as history. If you guys want to know more, I'll make another video about Dungeon Quest as history. For I am actually a ve a veteran, not like some people. Goodbye.